Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional 9 down goal player. In this video, I'm going to continue with my commentaries on the through three point. And I'm going to talk about the move here, where black jumps on the third line. This is a move that we used to think was just bad. And I'll talk about that. And in recent years, it's become one of the popular moves. First of all, I want to compare it with um, the slide that I was talking about in the last video. When black plays this slide and white plays away, then black can play this move um, to, to play an extra move to get a position on the upper side. This actually compares to black's move here, where if white plays here, black will play this way. And when black plays this way, having this stone on the third line is actually, it's a much better position. And black can follow up again with a, a third move here um, black has good moves to follow up with in this shape. So it's working very well for black. And that's the idea that black is trying to play another move here. And when black does get, get that move it locally, it's I, an ideal shape for black. The shape that black has in the upper right corner is very good. So this is what black is aiming at. Uh, since it's a jump after white has extended on the fourth line, Obviously, the problem is uh, this hole in black's shape. So the hole here is going to be a problem that black has. And white has the option of immediately attacking it. So we're going to talk about white pushing through here and cutting. White has a choice of two cuts. If white cuts here, actually, this is going to revert to a different joseki. So going back to the beginning here, um, if white with this move plays the double hane, then we had this joseki. This is one of the first video of this whole series where I talked about this joseki, which is, it's even enough. Um, but when white plays here and black plays here, if white pushes through and cuts this way, we'll have exactly the same result. So this will happen. And locally, this is an even result. In the opening of the game, in early stages of the game, uh, black has no problem with this because black does have the initiative and that ponuki on the upper side, that capture of the one stone, is a very resilient, strong shape which black can use to build uh, territory on the side and if black pushes here later, then black will be building towards the center. And so the potential of this strong shape black has built on the upper side is always good in the beginning. It's good to have this at the start of the game, in the early stages of the game. Sometimes later in the game, it's not quite so effective. So as a kind of a rule of thumb, I would say that this is okay for black in the early parts of the game. But uh, what if white pushes through and cuts on the other side? This is a more important problem because if black plays here now and white takes, then black's shape on the upper side, it's not nearly as good as it was just now. And in that other variation, it's not near, it was much better with capturing one stone. So this is not an ap option for black. And black will just take the, the stone that white has played to cut. Um, there is a gold proverb that says that you, you should take the cutting stone. It's, it's a pretty valid proverb. And so it all depends on whether the latter favors white or not. I would say this is uh, not a good idea for black, usually when the latter favors white. It always depends on whether black has some great ladder, block, ladder blocking move. If black has a good ladder block, if black has a good ladder blocking move, then um, it's okay for black. But otherwise, capturing the one stone here is probably good for white. So it depends on the ladder. If the ladder favors black, and white is going to play something like this, this is probably good for black now because the group in the corner is completely alive, and this stone on the outside it still has a lot of potential. So if the latter favors black, I would not play this way with white. So it all depends on that. Just to go back a few moves, if the latter favors white, maybe black doesn't want to play this move and instead should play this a move like this. The other option being um, crawling, which is, which is um, that's the subject of a different video. So when black jumps here, We'll assume that the ladder that um, the ladder in this variation favors black. So, if the ladder favors black, maybe white's not going to do this. So, white's other option would be to push once. 
Now, pushing once here um, is maybe the main line move here. When white pushes here and black extends, now white can push through and cut on this side. And why this side? There's a good reason, but first we'll look at the other side. Uh, if white push cuts on this side, then uh, this variation will happen anyway. Now if white pushes on this side, does black take the one stone in this case? Actually, in this case, when white captures the corner, this result resembles uh, one that I was showing before. When white pushes through and cuts immediately, I was calling this an even result. But if we add a black stone here and a white stone here, obviously this is going to be better for white. It's going to be an improvement for white. So this is something that black does not want to do. So when white pushes here and black extends, then white can put, cut on this side and black does not have the option of capturing that white stone. So black will connect here and white will play an attachment on the third line. So this is a tetrazy worth remembering if black pushes through. Now we see the value of white not allowing black to capture a stone in the corner because if white plays this point next, white will be able to kill black in the corner. So this variation is usually not very good for black. Black would have to add a stone to the corner and white would take the initiative in the fight on the outside. So black is going to push through on the second line. White covers here and black will curl around. We used to think that this was good for white because black has played so many moves on the second line, but actually white's wall here, I'll mark the wall, this wall here, it is, um, it doesn't have any liberties towards the upper side, so it is not so strong if black gets to play some kind of a pincer uh, around here or maybe here later, maybe here later in the game. If black plays some kind of a pincer, that white wall is not so um, strong. So um, the judgment of this trade, it depends on the board position. Um, white can get a reasonable uh, result by playing somewhere towards the side after this. So this would be okay for white. I'd call it about even. We were surprised with the computer analysis when we started having AIs that were stronger than professionals um, and they were giving black a better score than we expected. Um, but, but I would call this about even. So it's playable for both sides. White does have the option of not playing, um, not playing this push through and cut. Um, sorry, um, I mean, black does have the option of not extending here, in which case black can connect actually. If black connects, then white will cover and we get into this variation. This is not so good for black. Black has crawled a bit too much. So black's better option would be to play here, um, which white could actually leave this, or white's local move would be to press on the third line here. And black will probably leave it. Later on, uh, white will be playing this move and forcing black to connect on the side. White does have further forcing moves. For instance, white can play here later to threaten the corner. Um, so white does have that extra potential to have a thick position, a very thick position with this wall here, um, with the extra forcing move on the second line. So locally, this is very nice for white. Uh, Black's, um, the good point for black, of course, is that black has sente. Having the initiative in early stages of the game is always important. If white plays away now, then black's next move would be to play here and extend or play the double honey. Usually extending is good. This would give black a very good position towards the upper side, towards um, the left of the screen. And it would um, also be setting up some kind of an attack against white. For instance, if white continues to play away, then black would later on be able to, to pincer white at some point here and have an attack on white on the upper side. So, um, I guess that covers just about all of the variations here. Let's take a look at, so um, when black jumps here, white's choices were to push through and cut somewhere or to push on the fourth line. Those were the two choices that white had. And when, when white pushes through here, um, 
if the latter favors white, white will cut on the second line. Uh, and if, if white cuts on this side, it's, you don't really see it with this order of moves, but this would lead to an even result to it, would be an even trade. It's probably more likely that white is going to push on the fourth line when that ladder is good for black, and black will play the diagonal move here. This is the, by far the most popular way to play. White can play the Tari here, um, but would probably want to follow up with this extension anyway. So I'm going to say that white's next move would be to play here. So that's it for this video, um, and thank you for watching, and see you next time.